imaging with the MX5 CCD camera. Here we have an attempt to get focus sorted and I've used an ordinary um, 50 uh, millimeter uh, camera lens from an old SLR camera and you can see I'm, I'm nearly getting focus and, I, and it's basically I'm on to uh, Ursa Major and you can see that there's a double well star there and I'm basically going to try and improve the focus on it there's a lot of faint stuff around it so the idea is to tweak the focus so it's correct and then I can do a dark frame this camera has an, um, a parallel port interface so you need to have an older computer I've got it working in Windows XP and you need to go into your actual computer setup BIOS and make sure you've got it set correctly and on mine this this did come with an accelerator and I got this on, a, on an auction site and basically and you can see if I move it around the screen a bit this is as I say before I've got you know very improved focus but this is how you start as soon as you get the stars you first of all you get them as a very large circle and then basically I bought the um, focused so that I was actually focusing uh, at for, for an actual closer distance because I was out really and soon I'll have it on better focus. This exposure was about 14 seconds. Now I've got the focus just about right outside and I'm starting to pick up a lot of the fainter stars around and I've been imaging here at part of Versa Major and so I'm much more happy with, with this particular focus that I've got. You really do have to play around the focus on this particular camera. So I'm going to increase exposure a little bit and see how much I can push it and then take a dark frame. As you can see with my next star shot the uh, stars move. Now I've got this camera set up on a fixed uh, tripod but that's okay. Basically I've got the focus as good as I can using a 50mm camera lens and I haven't done any dark subtraction but I'm quite pleased with the result. The MX5C camera is a perfect camera for beginners because you can use an ordinary um, sturdy camera tripod such as this and the camera is then pointing up to the sky, it's quite misty night and now I'm pointing up at the stars up there and at the moment it does a major and I'm trying to pick up the stars in Earth's major this seems to be the ideal um, exposure time in the sky conditions I've got at the moment probably about 16 to 17 seconds on the tripod if I increase exposure any more I'm getting like a white out so it's telling me I'm getting about the limit I can on this 50mm lens without tracking so now I'm going to try and do a dark frame so basically you, you put, have to put a little cap on the lens and take the same exposure and I can move the camera around the sky I'll take a few more shots while it's clear it's been very very cloudy for a long long time. Best to experiment around a different part of the sky, pick up familiar constellations such as Gemini or as a major and then you can venture onto different parts of the sky first and you need to get your focus and experiment with exposure first. Here you can see I've aimed at a different part of the sky and basically you pick up faintest stars because, it, because it's focused better and this is without subtracting dark frames. As you can see 17 seconds seems to be the optimum for this particular lens. I could try uh, adjusting the f-stops as well because possibly if I make the f a higher value I might be able to expose for a longer time and pick up fainter things because it, it is fogging out. Um, it's quite a lot of light hitting the CCD on a very wide field as well, I'm, I'm really pushing it right to its max and so really if I stop it down with the lens down, let's see if we can do longer exposures on a tripod without having to track At 19 seconds the stars are starting to show definite trails on this exposure on this tripod showing that if I put this onto my um, telescope and I put my little motor on, it's a little 9 volt motor, I'm going to improve these pictures enormously but I'm really just getting the focus right on the early days. I'm imaging in Leo and basically it is at 17 seconds seems to be my optimum exposure. If I go any more um, basically the histogram shows like total overexposure and I'm not getting the 
images I like but I'm quite happy with these it's like almost like a rough sort of you know I'm actually seeing what's up there in the sky if you stick to taking pictures around Ursa Major you'll find that due to the way that um, the Earth's axis is tilted with respect to the pole star you're going to get less smudgy images of the stars even at close to 20 seconds exposure here's 17 ex seconds exposure on MX5C I'm getting still getting points if however I point the MX5C using a fixed tripod towards the south um, on the meridian where the stars are reaching the maximum height of the sky as they're passing the meridian you'll get much more blurred images of the stars for the same exposure value so for experimentation stick to things around the pole star and you should get some decent shots like this one even without um, extracting dark frame once you've got yourself a decent shot um, without processing you can tell by the fact that it starts well exposed then try using some of the tools um, and basically you can try filters and contrast, I just did a normal stretch contrast and I've applied a filter and suddenly you can see that the actual star field really leaps into view now and this is around Ursa Major the point about using um, CCD cameras like these is they do come with a lot of extra tools and although I can take pictures with the tripod on my Minolta camera up to 30 seconds this particular CCD camera although it's a pain to set up and if it's cloudy you set it all up and then suddenly clouds come over once you, once you do get a fairly steady viewing you can get some decent shots like this using just a normal SLR camera lens and I haven't done much, much processing on this at all I basically just looked at the contrast and applied a filter one of the filters once I find a picture that I'm fairly happy with I can then apply a colour balance to it using the tools available in VIXCOM 5 and again this is around Ursa Major because as I say, I'm, I'm, I live around o over 51 degrees north, about 51.4 degrees north in latitude, and I'm, I'm relying on the fact that obviously around the pole star there's going to be less um, relative, this st relative star movement. And here's, and here's my colour image here. And again, I haven't, haven't applied um, any uh, dark frame subtraction, and the image is 17 seconds. Once I've found a picture that I'm fairly happy with, always make sure that the lens on your CCD camera is um, not fogged up and have them some lens tissue to clean it you go nice and clean you can see this is a Pentacon f1.8 50mm multi-coated lens perfect for doing beginner's work like I'm doing on uh, CCE. This is the MX5C camera and as you can see it's got a um, parallel interface and I'm using this this tripod which is a very sturdy tripod which I'm able to tilt. The raw image taken around Leo constellation is here and I will then apply a contrast and then a filter to see what we can bring out. Let's see what we can do with this picture. Okay, on a smooth, sharper filter, the same image um, towards Leo, and suddenly I'm starting to see a lot uh, stars of a lot, you know, fainter magnitude on the image. And this is the, this is the processing power of these type of chips using a, a, a PC. If I remove the background and I'm closer to where the meridian is, you can see that the stars, instead of seeing being pinpoints, have started to be to show you know the movement in the sky on a 17 second exposure with a basic 17 second exposure and this is what you get and using my mouse I'll show you, you can, you'll, be, you'll be able to see what's happening live first of all I go into filters and I use a uh, smoother sharper filter on there yeah and instantly you'll see there's a big difference using a smoother sharper filter I'm able to get a much higher definition picture
um, and this is the point of using your basic camera lens, your 50mm camera lens or something of that ilk because you're giving a wide field view of the, of the stars and I end up with a picture like this for a 17 second exposure and I've applied um, a high pass filter to it rather than an unsharp mask and as you can see there are the star trails so next time I use this I really should put it on the telescope and get the mount going and the, and the motor going and see if I can improve my imaging but then that's yeah, I'm just a beginner, I'm getting to find my way around. Around about midnight and the scene conditions have improved so I've induced, reduced exposures to six seconds across the meridian and it's picking up a lot of faint star images and there is a planet rising which I believe may well be Jupiter. If you see a, a planet um, pass a field of view when you're using your normal camera lens obviously you're not going to get much detail but um, looks like I've captured Jupiter there and I can make out that there's what appears to be some um, of the Jovian moons either side there so I'm, I'm, I'm getting a faint detection that there are the bands you know, on the planet but obviously I would have to use a telescope to get a better picture than that but certainly I could look look it up from the date and time see if I am picking up uh, the moons there correctly and as the uh, gas giant's moving across my field and as the gas giant is moving across the field of view I can get a picture of it and obviously even under this low power I'll be able to see you know some of the movement of the moons of Jupiter.